Hey everyone, welcome to Breakout Wednesday for the 14th of September 2022. It's currently 4 p.m. on the West Coast, 6 p.m. on the East Coast. First of all, remember this is never financial advice. We're not a financial advisor. This is simply a video blog on how one trader sees a market and everyone needs to take responsibility for their own decisions. Sorry I missed last week. I have no idea why. I thought it must have just been one of those days. I can't remember. Um, here's a chart of the All Lords. Um, and today, obviously, the market got... Um, uh, annihilated and it was down big okay so really just a bit of chop lately but I've definitely got hammered today okay um, there are a lot of stocks that held up though right like obviously for those are long-term investments in things like gear you got hammered um, but um, there were a lot of stocks that didn't you know there's there's money flowing into healthcare like ResMed was up today um, and I'm gonna go through a few others okay um, and so um, let's just quickly a few of the trades from two weeks ago uh, that some of them still in. I just want to quickly mention some of them. NEU was super classic. I, I mentioned here that I need a bit of more VCP. And then this day on the 1st of September, I posted to Twitter, just had a, a really nice day with tiny volume. And um, that's enough for me. Look, if you look at the volume here, it was like um, uh, 118,000 shares traded that day. Um, super low volume for this stock. And the next day, kind of broke out, wasn't the best day, but then gapped up the next day and we've had a nice trend in stock. So um, I've trimmed a little bit of NEU, but I'm still very much in it. And I'm gonna ride it um, because this is a classic pattern um, and I think I can get some more out of it. Um, and um, now there's also obviously a lot of strength to be found still in these lithium names. So I was talking about CXO and it was, you know, pulling back here and it was just showing relative strength and it's rallied up. And so I'm really watching this guy for, a, you know, a really good buy signal, something that I can just have conviction in. Um, we'll keep watching it. PLS has just been having an amazing run. There's just money filtering in into this sector. I'm going to talk about some other stocks in the sector later. Um, another stocks I'm talking about, EMR, okay, it's broke out of, it, of its flag um, and, uh, you know, held up okay today on second. Okay, so EMR is um, kind of broken out and it's holding, holding up well. I didn't actually take it. I'm just um, it's just watching it play out. I was busy with some other stuff. Um, don't think I mentioned two weeks ago this little tight pattern that was forming on LAU. Um, I've been chatting about it with a few mates in a, in a chat group that um, I'm hoping some people out there saw this one. Um, very reminiscent of the MCA trade from last year. Um, if for those, you know, just go back and have a look. It's a super, super tight pattern. Big move. I'm not scared of big moves. Um, big volume support of this big move. And then we just had a ridiculously tight contraction. Okay. Have a look at the volume on these days here, the 31st and the 1st. Um, this day here, the 5th. It's just no volume at all. Um, the tightest pattern in the world and then really held up well today. So I've trimmed a bit of my trade on this guy up here at 635, but I'm holding um, more than half of it still. Okay, so uh, let's see how that one goes. TON, uh, these guys, you've got to be quick with these ones, okay? Um, this provided an amazing quick trade for those who had orders waiting, okay? When I find a little penny stock like this, I mean, I talked about this for a bunch of times, I know, but um, and I just put my buy stop order one tick above that. I don't wait for a close or anything stupid like that. I mean, what are you going to do if you wait for a close on TON, right? Um, you know, you're going to get home that day from work or whatever to close at 34. What are you going to do? Buy the next day? I mean, that's when you should be selling with this particular trade um, on open the next day. And if you don't have a buy stop waiting to get you filled the millisecond this thing breaks out, then you are gonna be a loser in the long term. I promise you that, okay? Um, uh, the, the most explosive fast moving in stocks, you cannot stuff around, you just get your fill. Um, if it fakes out, that's life, okay? But get your fill, um, wait for it to race up in these penny stocks and dump the shit out of it, okay? Um, IRE, boo, boo, boo. Um, okay, no trade in IRE. I don't, you know, so I don't like stocks, I've talked about a bunch of times that just rally up um, and don't have a break right before the resistance line. I'm going to keep watching this. I want it to tighten, come back around and have another crack. Um, and if it can form a tight little pattern on top of this huge base, I will 100% go long. Okay. Um, I really want stocks that are um, pausing right below this resistance line. Okay. So if we go back to the LAU trade. 
um, the whole point is this we're just having a, a break it's like running up a flight of steps and having a break in between in flights okay this is just having a break it's just resting and boom it explodes again um, I don't like the ones that um, just run up from right down here okay it doesn't make sense to me um, to trade those I think the success rate is a lot lower this is a huge base but that's not enough we need tight in on the right hand side before we can get in before I can get in okay now some new trades first of all there is this one scan I do a lot and it's just a try point resistance scan okay so let's just do it try point resistance uh, and I just put about hardly any filters in at all and that's literally it I just want to find stocks with try point resistance okay um, and then I just do this every day because it's crazy how many good setups it finds I'm not interested in that one you know this one is kind of interesting 5 EA um, you know this is forming a very tight little ascending triangle there um, held up pretty well today and so yeah so that's one's in my watch list to just see how that goes if this is just tighten up here under there for another few days and bang I might be able to get a quick trade out of that um, CCV, you know, that shit. Uh, let me just, EXR, bang, that looks pretty good, okay? So this tri-point resistance scan finds a crazy number of good trades, okay? Um, and all it's doing is, it works really well in the ASX market, not so much the US market, because, um, I don't know, it works well in our cheaper penny stocks rather than, um, you know, the super, super liquid ones. Uh, but anyway, um, EXR, this is a nice base, try point, try point resistance, um, and there, are, there is some money flowing into kind of um, small cap energy names right now. Like I could um, reel off a bunch, but EXR, another one is, um, oh, my blank, MEL. Um, there's a bunch, right? So MEL is just another energy stock, energy stock in the ASX with huge volume coming in the last few days. Um, it, that's not a trade for me. I, want, I need that to base longer, but... Um, man, if that could base for like another week here, then it could be good. But the point of that is that there is some money rushing into little or tiny energy names, um, and uh, you know, and and try point resistance is a great great way to find them. Okay, um, finds a lot of crap ones too, right? But you know, um, usually there's always a few good ones in there. Okay, I only found nine, so it's not that many to look through. Um, now, some other stocks that I'm just you know, on my radar because they're holding up okay is. The dreaded A2M, which had the, you know, a huge run that talked about a lot, and if anyone knows about this stock, and has just put this huge bottoming pattern in, this huge base, broke down out of it, came down, bang, and it's put in some big lows. It's finally got on top of all its key moving averages. You know, the reason I like, I've talked about this too many times, but like these moving averages is that these things don't usually go straight up. They, take, they need to grind sideways for ages and ages and ages before they're ready to go up. And the moving average is the way that um, indicates me, have they gone sideways for long enough, okay? It's as simple as that. Um, and so um, this is starting to you know, shape up as a stock that has been grinding sideways for long enough. Um, I'd still like it to go longer. I mean, this here right now, it's not, that's not a base, okay? Um, it's showing signs of the start of a base, but if that can base here for another week or two, um, you know, at least another 10 days. Um, so I'm going to be watching that one and I'll follow up on it if it actually um, performs and just bases away quietly for me. TER just sees all the cold stocks are strong where this one's just basing away. I'm going to watch that one. This is the one we traded back here um, and I just want that to base a lot longer and tighten up. Um, interesting little one called CBE, right? Which is um, a little material stock that's a huge run up on massive volume. Um, and it's had formed a, a pennant or whatever on lower volume um, and Yeah, and it, these things are uh, these trades are super risky. Okay, the, the risk reward on it's great But the idea to trade this one is just a you know a buy and a break of this resistance Which was today um, having a stop wherever you feel comfortable You know you could have it tight here or down here uh, and then trying to ride this into these old highs Okay um, and you sit back and just let it play out and it can be incredibly volatile experience And so it's best not to watch it intraday. But the risk reward on that is is like three and a half to four to one Okay, you guys can do the math at home, but it's super good risk reward on these guys You only really need to win um, You know 30 40 percent of them to do really really well in the long run Okay, so that was an interesting one and there are a few others I obviously cannot trade all these stocks, but there are some despite the market getting um, spanked today there are some interesting things out there happening. AAC, okay, this is the one we traded back here, right? Had this lovely base on top of all its moving average, and boom, nice trade. Um, and now it came down, tested um, the old resistance turn support, bounced, tested it again, bounced, and base in here with right on top of its moving averages again, okay? 
This setup here is nowhere near as good as this one here, but uh, it's it's decent. Obviously, as I always say, I'd like it to do this a bit longer, but um, you know, I definitely I'm probably going to trade that one um, because. You know, agricultural stuff, food stuff, it's still hot um, at the moment and I, um, I don't see that going away, um, you know, very quickly. So, um, now another one and these HZN stock that loves to have false breakouts, but it's basing again. Trade of this guy, for those who remember back here and here, this one started well, then failed, this one went really well. So, um, watching that, a lot of the oil stocks are basing, if you look at Santos and, and all, those, all, those, all those stocks um, basing away. Um, now another one, um, for those who were around kind of last year, um, we traded PLL and it was a, I'm just going to quickly fling back to it, um, it was one of these trades yeah, back here that gave this awesome base, okay, right on top of the moving averages, broke out and then just trended up, okay, and so um, I you know, talked about that a lot when that was playing out, but, and it's it's a lithium stock uh, and it's done a lot of done a lot of work, hasn't it, from these lows at 50 and it's rallied up to 96 or something. But obviously the leading lithium names, you know, PLS, CXO, are strong. Um, PLL tends to get pulled along with them, uh, and you know I think that uh, when you're dealing with stocks in the best sectors, having nice little consolidation bases, that's my bread and butter. And you know um, this totally could fail. Um, because it's done a lot of work and I would like that to base longer, but that is a decent little consolidation pattern of PLL, okay? Um, and these guys, you know, anyone with some eyes can see um, this is a sort of stock that just about, just can just trend, you know, for like 30 days straight um, sort of thing. Like, um, look at this rally, look at this rally, um, go back, have a look at that base that I just showed you guys before. Um, once it gets underway, um, you know, it really just doesn't look back, right? Like if you look at this move, not one day until here did it close below its 20 exponential moving average. Um, it just gets flying and flying and flying and just super volatile. And um, I think the time to get out of these is when they extended so far above the 20 and the 10 exponential moving average, I meant to say. You can use Bollinger Bands or you can just use common sense, but when they're gapping up like ridiculously high above um, extended above those exponential moving averages, then um, it's a pretty good time to just trim. Um, uh, now I'm rambling, let's go to XRF. Uh, she, uh, XRF. Um, XRF is tightening away, okay? So this is very um, kind of similar to the LAU trade I was talking about before, right? Um, LAU, this chart looks nicer, mainly because it's probably a bit more liquid um, and it just looks smoother and, you know, just. No, it looks just nicer to trade, doesn't it? Um, but XRF uh, is a stock that um, we have traded before, um, and I'm just going to zoom back a bit. Um, and it trends really nice, uh, and um, you know it's a little or liquid, and so there are some decent spreads on it during the day, which are annoying, and so the position will have to be smaller. But uh, it it is tightening and tightening and tightening, and I just. I don't give a shit about the stock. If it tightens like that for long enough, I am always simply going to trade it, okay? Um, I think that's it. Uh, I think that's it. I'll be back next week. Um, touch wood. Um, catch ya. Bye.